Hi, this is Dave Mosher, producer for Discovery Space. Going to run you guys through the week of Monday, October 6, 2008. But before I do that, I was out last Friday and I want to give you the wrap up as promised. So here goes. First of all, the Hubble Space Telescope Repair and Servicing Mission has been delayed quite a few months to February 2009. Uh, they have to train the astronauts to fix and replace a device that communicates with the ground and, and sends payload, uh, some scientific information, you know, images of the great beyond. So they have to train astronauts to do that. Second, it snowed on Mars. That's cool. And the Jules Verne spacecraft broke apart above the Earth. That's big news. It was as planned, so don't worry about it. And it's really pretty, so be sure and check the Discovery Space blogs to see video of that, as well as some really great images. And finally, from last week, there's talk of the $700 billion bailout slash rescue slash whatever plan and how it's going to cut into scientific funding. So keep your eyes peeled for what might be hurting from that. Uh, as for the website, here we go. I have a jam-packed week for you guys. Uh, first off, you can check out the site right now. There's a video up called Three Questions, and it's with Andy Puckett, who's an astrophysicist, and Jorge Ribas, who's the video producer for that, asked him what exactly we can do or what would happen if an asteroid hit Earth. So be sure and check that out. On Tuesday, October 7th, I've got some great stuff planned out for you. First of all, I chatted with Barry Barish, who is the head of the global design effort for the International Linear Collider. This is a 31-mile long particle collider that they're building to be determined where. And uh, if you think about it, that's almost twice as long as the Large Hadron Collider is around. Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, which you've heard about all its doomsday scenarios and black holes and strange matter and all that jazz. That's 17 miles around, and they're already thinking about building this next huge collider, so I wanted to know everything about it, and I chatted with Barry. So look forward to that. Also, I have a guest post from a Rhode Island School of Design student who is helping NASA get back to the moon, so you can look forward to that. Wednesday, October 8th, as I told you before, the Hubble Space Telescope repair mission was pushed back. I was getting together a huge package for you guys on all the cool stuff that's going to be done and all its impacts and all the great things that Hubble's been doing, but I want to hold off on that for a little bit. But I put up a bunch of puzzles for you guys to solve in the meantime. put those up last week, but I'm going to sort of bring them to the front again on Wednesday. You can also look for a space photo quiz. Thursday, October 9th, it's all about Cassini again. If you remember last week, I was telling you how it'd fly by Tethys, one of Saturn's icy moons. Well, this time it's flying by Enceladus again and it's going to be uh, within 16 miles. Now to put that in perspective, the space station, space between the space station and the Earth is 220 miles. This is 16 miles. That's about 14 times closer than the space station is to the Earth. So that's a really close pass. It's going to be really interesting. It's going to fly through some of its icy jets and things like that. So be sure to look out for that. Also, I told you I was going to have a My Take by uh, Ben Shalef up last week about the space elevator. Well, I wanted to wait a little bit because it turns out that the technology knowledge site, which is called Discovery Technology, uh, is also going to run sort of an opposing op-ed piece. So be sure and check that out, uh, our double take, as we call it, on Thursday. October 10th, TGIF. Going to try and end your week on a good note with uh, tons of pictures of Saturn's moons. Uh, they're so cool, and I thought because of the Cassini flyby, it would be fun to show you sort of the best of of Saturn's moons because there's so many of them, there's so much variety out there, you just have to see everything. Also over the weekend, be sure to look out for Richard Garriott's flight to the space station, that's Sunday, October 12th. Uh, I did a chat with Richard a couple months ago, so be sure and check that out to get some perspective on it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you at the end of the week on Friday with my wrap-up. Until then, bye.